Hi, and welcome to a very short introduction. From ancient Greece to branding, globalisation to Homer, and logic to fashion, we'll showcase a concise and dynamic insight into a range of diverse topics for wherever your curiosity may lead you. So here is today's very short introduction. Hello, I'm Dana Arnold, Professor of Art History at the University of East Anglia in the UK. I'm the author of Art History, a very short introduction. My first question is, can art have a history, or is it something of timeless beauty? Or perhaps, indeed, it's both. In this book, I think about how we write about, present, read, and look at art in a global context. And I also look at the ways in which art history can respond to different social, cultural, and geographical contexts. What is art history? And is it different from other kinds of histories that might focus on historical figures, for example, or periods, or events. And this leads me to question how we write art history, and this can really change the way we see and how we think about art. Let me expand on this point. We're very familiar with art history as the biography of artists. It's about the artists and the artworks that were produced and mapped against their lives, and perhaps even explained through events in an artist's life. This also implies a sort of historical sequence, as an artist's work is, whether it's a painting or sculpture, can be seen as an early or a late work, for example. But what if we don't know who the artist was? And this is often the case with art from outside of Europe or from prehistory, but it's still art. Alternatively, we could focus on style or on different periods of art. They're both very familiar ways in which we encounter paintings and sculptures in galleries and museums, as well as in books, television programmes, and the many other ways in which art history is presented to us. My very short introduction considers the ways in which we write about art and the ways in which we encounter art, and how these can influence its histories. Equally, I think about the social and cultural historical context of art, and how these can change over time, and in turn, how these shifting contexts can change our understanding of art objects and their histories. I think this is becoming increasingly important, as art history has become far more global. We need only think about the international currency of the Blockbuster exhibition. These fantastic shows, full of wonderful artworks, tour the world, presenting ideas and art in different kinds of contexts to a range of publics in new galleries and museums, quite often designed by star architects that have become tourist destinations in their own right, as well as symbols of national prestige. The display of art history in museums and galleries influences the way in which we think about it and understand it. Permanent collections are often displayed in chronological order, and we can take this to imply a sort of idea of progress. We move from Egyptian to Greek and so on and so forth. But does progress through the different rooms of a gallery really equal the progress of the history of art? Perhaps it does in chronological terms, but there are other ways of thinking about this. In my VSI, I suggest one form of art isn't necessarily better than another just because it came after it, or because we don't know who the artist is, or because information about how the artwork was originally used or seen is now unknown. Temporary exhibitions tell us different kinds of histories or different kinds of stories. They might investigate the life of an artist or of an art movement or of a specific theme. And these are great because they can reconfigure artworks in different ways to present different kinds of histories. But we must remember that audiences respond to and experience the ways in which art history is presented according to their own particular cultural viewpoint. And this can change across geographies and time. In my book, I also question how we think about art history. Does it help if we understand the mind of an artist? And does this help us to understand artworks and their histories? Sometimes we're lucky enough to have diaries or manifestos written by artists. But can we ever really be inside their heads? Surely also we bring something to an artwork too. Not least our own cultural viewpoint interpretation, and indeed our interest as to why we're looking at the artwork in the first place. We can analyse an artwork using various interpretative tools, for example psychoanalysis, 
and sometimes this will reveal something about ourselves, as well as the artist who made it. We can also read a work of art to understand the story it tells, or to learn more of the people or places represented through the visual clues that the artist may provide. And this can be a fascinating process of art historical detective work. It is important, however, not to lose sight of the artwork itself. After all, it is a physical object, for example, paint on canvas or carved stone. And we do respond to its presence as much as to the varied and rich histories a painting, sculpture or any other kind of artwork can reveal. And it is the physical presence of artworks that first drew me to the study of art history. The enjoyment of looking, appreciating and experiencing art is for me a way into exploring cultures and societies in a global context. And it enables us to understand that perception and values can change and shift over time as well as geographies. So, to answer my opening questions, yes, art does have a history, a very rich and fertile one. And yes, it is timeless, and it does have a timeless quality that continues to engage us. I do hope you enjoy my very short introduction to art history as much as I enjoyed writing it.